Well, good morning. This is Jerry Butler, and I'm still here at the uh, Galactic Gathering, uh, where we have so many interesting and wonderful people that are just wandering through. And right now, I have the pleasure of having uh, Niara, who is with the uh, Denver Examiner Online. And Niara has a ton of information because she gets around to rub elbows with so many interesting people. Now, Niara, would you tell us a little bit about yourself, what you do, what brings you here, uh, some of your travels, where you've been, some of the interesting people and topics that you have discussed? Okay, well, two years ago, I kind of stepped out um, as an extraterrestrial educator. Um, I have experiences uh, from my time in the military of seeing extraterrestrial technology. And um, I just felt like it was really time to start educating people about the possibilities of contact and uh, giving them some kind of education beyond uh, Hollywood movies, which are often a lot of really fear-based. Now, you say that you have experiences. Would you care to share with the viewers and the listeners some of your experiences and uh, in terms of uh, the technology that you have, you personally seen this technology? What did you see? Um, I saw a saucer-shaped craft uh, out on the Nevada test site. We were trying to track it with radar. Is this Area 51? Um, a lot of people mistake Area 51 for the Nevada test site. It's just a small area of the whole Nevada test site. So I would say I was more out on the radar range that night, and then uh, maybe later went to Area 51. Now, Area 51 is like an unauthorized area. Is that so? You know, I've I've seen so many documentaries where you can't get around there. You yes, really it's can't get. Yes, a highly get... classified area. It is within the Nevada test site. So some people say that they're taking a picture in front of the gate to Area 51. That's not strictly correct. You can take a, a picture of yourself in front of the gate to the Nevada test site, but Area 51 is well within that boundary. So tell me about this craft that you saw. Uh, how did you happen upon this craft? Um, we were out there to see if the radar would track it uh, on radar, and uh, it couldn't be tracked with that particular type of radar. It was an auto track radar, uh, which is a surface air missile radar. Okay, now was it was the craft sitting still? Uh, was it flying or what? Um, it was hovering. Uh huh. Okay, hovering. Mm -hmm. Was it making any sound? Yeah, it was making a sound. Um, the only way I know to describe it is was like speakers at a concert when no music is coming through but they're still on. Kind of a low hum. How fast was it traveling in your uh, estimation? Well, uh, when I was walking it, it was hovering. But the maneuvers that the craft, and there were more, more than one craft in the sky that night, uh, the maneuvers they were do doing made, them, made it impossible for them to be tracked by the type of radar we had. Okay. Describe it. Was it a saucer type craft? It was a saucer type craft. What color? It was glowing orange on the bottom, and the bottom looked uh, like translucent. And uh, it was uh, fairly good sized, I would say, uh, possibly 30 to 50 feet in diameter. You never saw it land? No, I never saw it land. Uh, did you, it just happen to come up out of nowhere? You just happened to be watching the skies and then bam, there it was? And no, we were out there uh, at the request or the orders of um, our superiors to try to see if this could be tracked. So okay. we were out on the radar range at night. I was a military uh, airman at the time and uh, we were under orders to be out there and try to track these things Okay. in the middle of the night. Tell me more about your experiences. How did you get started, or what piqued your interest uh, in uh, our galactic brothers and sisters, so to speak? Well, I've also been an abductee from childhood on. From what age? Uh, at least age four, if not sooner. And, uh, Would you care to share with the listeners and the viewers uh, what that experience was like and how long it lasted? Um, it's ongoing. Um, I woke up uh, a few weeks ago with three bruises under my right arm. Any but implants? I know, I know for a fact they weren't there when I went to sleep. Uh, yes, I believe there are some implants. I ha haven't had them checked out or tried to have them removed, though. So. 
Okay. What do you think these implants are? What do they stand for? Is this a tracking mechanism, I you think? I think that they serve a multiple function. I think that they track uh, the whereabouts of the person that has the implant, and I think they also send back information on uh, physiological information on the person, uh, hormone levels, neuropeptide levels, uh, all kinds of different information because um, these beings seem to be doing a hybridization program and I think they need that kind of information on us physiologically so that when they do their genetic upgrades to their species that they get things right. What do you remember most about your uh, experience when being abducted? Okay, and we don't want to give the book away, but I do want you, when you're ready to release your book, I want you to have you on the Jerry Butler Show so that you can tell everybody about it, believe me. Sure. Uh -huh. Okay, now, uh, this is an ongoing uh, thing, so to speak. When is the last time uh, they've made contact with you? Uh, I would say three to four weeks ago. And, and what up, happened? I woke up and there were three bruises on the inside of my right upper arm. Okay. Um, Three, it looked like three finger, you know, marks. And, they, and when I woke up, they were half healed. But when I went to bed the night before, I had been massaging the outside of my right arm because of some carpal tunnel stuff. And so I, I was looking at this part of my arm before I went to bed. And then when I woke up in the morning, the bruises were there, and I know that I didn't put them there. Now, um, tell me some of the other things that you do and some of your greatest experiences or so uh, most memorable experiences or stories you've covered? Mm -hmm. Well, some of the other things I do is I write for the Denver Examiner as the Denver Extraterrestrial Contact Examiner. What does that entail? Um, what I'm doing with that is I'm educating people about contact and um, I've written several articles such as uh, the political and social implications of going multidimensional. Um, why might ETs be interested in humanity? Um, even there's an article there for President Obama called um, Seven Steps to Disclosure. Okay. And uh, Restoration of Our American Heroes about astronauts who report uh, UFO encounters. Now tell me this here. If someone wants to get in touch with you, they have interesting questions, they have some information that they would like to share with you, how can you be contacted? Um, you can go to my blog, which is easy to find. You just Google Durango Exopolitics. Say that slowly, please. Durango. Okay. Durango Exopolitics. That's X, the, the letter X, like, like an X-ray? No, E-X. Okay, Dur Durango E-X-O Politics. Right. Uh-huh. Uh -huh. Dot com, or just, just Google Durango it's a, it's Exo. Just okay. Just Google Durango Exopolitics, and okay. you'll find it. And it is, um, you know, it's... It's, uh, it's read quite a bit, so it comes right up at the top of the Google search. Okay, an email address, a, a website, a phone number, any, any other information that you'd like to give out so listeners can contact you or find you? Yeah, my email address is at Durango Exopolitics. Um, at just AT? No, um, I, I mean the email address is posted on the Durango Exopolitics blog. Okay, so what and is the email address? The actual email address is Gaia Tribe. Could you spell that, please? Uh-huh. G-A-I-A-T-R-I-B-E dot Niara, my name, at gmail.com. Okay. Uh, is there a contact number you can be reached at? Um, I'd rather not give my Okay. Number nope. Out. No problem. I understand okay, that. Sure. Uh, however, uh, I would like to say that I feel that you are a very interesting find, and I'm so glad I was able to stumble across you just in passing, and I would love to feature you on the Jerry Butler Show so that we can hear more about what you have to offer and all of the uh, different um, subject matters that you could discuss with us. Would you have an objection to me actually being able to contact you further so that I can give you added additional exposure in a very positive manner? Sure, that would be, I'd very much welcome that. Thank you very much. It would be indeed my pleasure. This is Jerry Butler once again, and as usual, I am right here at the Galactic Gathering, and I'd like to thank you so much for participating. Thank you. Uh -huh.